Hey ho, Kermit the Frog here! I mean, actually, no, it's Greg from Bureaucracy, but hey, you know, I've got to change these up a bit, or perhaps it'll get boring. See, I'm even wearing a different shirt today. Wow. So, I've got an exciting beer to do today. Um, this one was delivered to me by Mr. Graham Mahi himself of Triple Six Brewing. Um, it's a collaboration ale that they brewed with a, a brewer called Darren in, at Pelican Brewing in Oregon. Um, you may have never heard of them, but I tell you they're big news in the States right now, having just cleaned up the, I think it was best uh, medium to large brew pub in the um, World Beer Cup. That's a pretty huge thing to do. Um, so, I'm going to pour this beer and I'm going to tell you a little bit, I don't know much about Pelican, but I do know a lot about Triple Six, so I'll tell you a little bit, bit about them and Graham while I'm pouring this. So Graham, I think, is one of the brewers who doesn't get anywhere near enough credit in New Zealand, um, and he'll be the first to tell you that. I kid, Graham, I kid. Uh, he's very much been around for a long time, and I'm not saying he's old. Uh, he's been at the forefront of brewing. He uh, Moa, uh, Moa's original ale was one of his recipe, uh, one of his recipes um, with the whole champagne pro disgorgement process that he uh, prototyped there. Uh, that's something that doesn't get any, any real press at all. Um, he's also been involved in consulting to a lot of smaller breweries around New Zealand. He helped Bureaucracy start up, uh, gave me a lot of advice, a lot of which I disagreed with violently and did my own thing, but hey, you know. <laughs> um, it was certainly quality advice. Um, and yeah, he's, in, he's brewing at the same brewery that we use, uh, Shunter's Yard out at Martangi, and we're both... You know, occasionally we get together and we talk about some beers and drink some beers and uh, generally he's just a very nice guy to know and I'm, I'm quite privileged. Um, but enough uh, kissing Graham's ass. He, I don't think he watches these anyway. So here we have a beautiful pale, pale amber, almost verging on gold um, ale. I don't know, maybe I need to hold that up so you can see it crystal clear. Now this was brewed five months ago in Oregon while Graham was over there judging the World Beer Cup. Uh, it's got an amazingly fluffy, creamy white head. Let's see how well it stood up to five months of bottle age and being shipped here. Wow, the nose is great. I'm getting gooseberries, I'm getting passion fruit. Maybe some grapefruit. Subtle grapefruit. And there's a beautiful honey-like malt character underneath it, but uh, it's not what you normally get when you think of honey in a beer. It's normally that sort of, you know, not quite right malt character. But this is actual, it almost tastes like fresh clover honey um, that the beer's accidentally had something to do with on the way through. And it's, it's a really positive attribute. Let's take a taste. Oh, there's no way that's five months old. I mean, I know it is, but that tastes as fresh as some of the stuff coming out of our brewery tanks in Martangi. Um, that, right there, is testament to good bottling and good brewery practice. Um, this is something I think we could do with a bit more of in New Zealand. Uh, I'm going to get up, hang on, where's my soapbox? There we go. It really bugs me that I can't go down to the supermarket, or worse, recommend people who don't know any better go to the supermarket and grab a bottle of any New Zealand craft beer that I've had before and been wowed by, because I just can't trust the quality of the bottle, the quality of the bottling process, uh, the handling it's had on the way to, the, to wherever it is, supermarket often, um, the lighting on the shelves, bright neon lights, even the best brown bottles in the world won't protect against that for a long period of time. Um, stock rotation, how long has it sat there, basically they're going to get this bottle home, they're going to roll the dice. Sometimes it'll be amazing, other times it'll just be this oxidised mess and they'll think that, oh, that's, that's a terrible brewery. If you went and tried it at the brewery, you'd think it was one of the best beers you've had in your life. But, you know, what can we do? We're a small country, um, not enough people are drinking craft beer. Get out there and get your friends drinking craft beer. I told you I was in a soapbox. Um, yeah, it just needs to turn over faster, more people need to drink it. That's what needs to happen. Um, also, have a word with your, whoever's selling it to you. Don't make it too hard on them. Hey, they're doing us a favour by having it in there. If people aren't demanding it, it'll go away. 
And if people aren't buying it regularly, it'll taste bad for a while and then it'll go away. Get in there, buy as much as you can, convince your friends to buy as much as you can, and drink it fresh. Um, I won't even start the whole fresh is best thing, just in case Stu watches these and gives me shit. Um, but anyway, long running, old, old in jokes aside, back to this. Now, when I was in the States recently, I had American marmalade for the first time. Never had it before. I thought, it's marmalade, it'll be like English marmalade. No. Um, something about the quality of the citrus, or the, the different character they have with it, it's much brighter, way less bitter. Um, and it's just, it, it's, I don't have a favourite, you know, I, I love English marmalade for what it is, and I love American marmalade, but it's very different. This beer reminds me a lot of American marmalade. It's, it's bright and zesty. Um, as I said, it still tastes amazingly fresh for being five months in the bottle. Um, I just can't believe that. Uh, look at it lacing. Can you see how it's lacing down the glass? It's a really good sign of great brewing. You know, you've got good protein rests in your, in your brewing or, or very um, high quality malt that leaves that beautiful lacing. Um, as well as brewing process designed not to destroy all those proteins as you're going. So, um, yeah, a lot of skill by both brewers involved here, I suspect. Um, yeah. You know, this is the third one of these I've done, and I've yet to have something bad to say about a beer. That's kind of weird. I'm, I'm not here to... If it's bad, I'll say it. <laughs> as those who know me realise. And especially if it's my own beer. If, if, uh, if you're ever drinking bureaucracy beer, and you, have, and you don't like it, Hey, that's fine. People don't like things. If it's bad, I want you to tell me. Okay, email me, ring me up, whatever. Um, those of you who know me have my number. Uh, a quick Google search will find out my day job and has my number on their webpage. So you can always get hold of me. Uh, you can always email me, greg at bureaucracy.co.nz, which sounds like a mouthful, but Google it, you'll find it. Um, the only trap is that my name is spelled G-R-E-I-G. -E Just, I, yeah, I have no idea why. Dad... What was up with that? Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to go now because I've run out of things to say about this beer and I probably just babble on about how amazing it is anyway. Um, but if you get a chance to taste it, I think it's, it's beautiful. It's so well balanced. You could drink, this is a beer you could just drink all night. Um, but it's got those lovely fruity hop character, uh, hop notes that people want more and more from pale ales and IPAs. Um, it's an addictive little beast. So I'm going to go away now and finish this bottle, um, because, you know, I deserve it. Alright guys, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Bye!